So the last time we spoke was just before Christmas. And at that time I told you about how I had had the flu and had gotten over it and was feeling pretty good. And over Christmas and New Year's, I got a little surprise. That flu turned into pneumonia and ended up really, really sick. Um, went to the doctor, got antibiotics, got an inhaler. And if any of you have ever had pneumonia before, you know that um, the effects of the breathing lingers for a long time. And that's what happened to me. Uh, the doctor suggested that I get to lower altitude uh, while I recover for a couple weeks anyway. And uh, I had been putting off the trip to Columbia, as I've mentioned a number of times, so I decided this is the time to go. So here I am. I'm in Colombia. I'm in Armenia, and I'm feeling good and I'm breathing fine. Now, I went for a couple days to Manizales, which is almost as high as Cuenca, uh, to see Tom, who recently moved there from Cuenca after living in Cuenca for seven years. He moved to Manizales. And while I was there, I walked a lot, but the breathing issue returned uh, from the altitude. <clears throat> and so I was getting very dizzy, very lightheaded. Um, it was just kind of playing with my emotions. Um, the second day there, I walked uh, almost seven miles. So the walking wasn't the problem, it was just the breathing. I had thought about staying there for a couple more days, but decided I better get back to lower altitude. So I came back to Armenia, and sure enough, in the first day, I could breathe again, felt good. I've been walking about five miles a day here, and um, it's been very good for me. Aside from the fact that the place is awesome. Now, I have got a huge backload of things that I need to upload, so why haven't you seen any videos? Well, at the same time, is this where the violin music kicks in? At the same time, there was a Windows update. January 4th, there was a Windows 10 automatic update. Yes, no hat. Um, that update crashed my computer. And I had one hell of a time with it. Um, it took me two weeks to ultimately resolve it. And the only way I could resolve it was to basically wipe everything out and start over. So I need to get a boot disk and it was, I won't go through the details. It was kind of a nightmare. And in the process, I lost, lost my editing software. Um, and they refused to reinstate it for me. Even though in the past I've had to buy this twice, I have a lifetime subscription but my uh, uh, password, the keyword, uh, whatever registers it, um, ended up getting wiped out. I gave them all the information. I gave them some past emails. They just said, and I'm addicted to that particular software, so I just had to buy it again. <sighs> and they probably knew that. So I have my editing software back. I have my laptop back. Um, as of now, I have my health back. I'm hoping that when I go back tomorrow, um, well, tomorrow I go leave here, go to Cali, I get on the Frontera Techno bus, and I ride that to Ipialis at the border. Then I take a taxi to the border, I'll cross the border, and let me get back to the border in a moment. And then I'll go to Tulcan, which is the border town on Ecuador's side. And I'll get on the Flota Imbabura bus. And I'll ride that for about 14 hours to Cuenca. Um, the bus from Cali to the border is 12 hours, about. Uh, although the bus is 
lots of leg room, very comfy, has its own private entertainment center. Uh, so that ride is not bad. I actually, in some ways, enjoy it. Um, when I get to the Ecuador side, it's really a big roll of the dice what you end up getting. Uh, if I get a double decker uh, that's kind of loaded out, that'll be nice and the ride will be pretty nice. Um, at the border, coming across at the border, normally it's the Ecuador side that's a problem and it'll take half an hour to an hour uh, to, to go from the Ecuador side to the Colombian side. It's just um, it's just an antiquated border station and everything goes very slow and nobody works very fast. As a matter of fact, it was funny the last time I went through, there was a girl in one of the, the teller windows on, on the Ecuador side and she was just cranking people through. Boom, 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 boom. And the other four windows were just moving along at their own pace. And I thought, well, great. I mean, maybe maybe this will move along. Supervisor comes out from the back, whispers in her ear, goes back into the office, and now she's working at the same pace as the other ones. I don't know. It's hey, you're going too fast. You're making us look bad. Or if you if we get through all these people, maybe they don't need so many, and somebody will get laid off. I don't know what the deal was. But back to this time. So I go through the Ecuador side and it's the usual, it was 30, 40 minutes. And I come across to the Colombian side and I get to the Colombian side and there's this massive line I hadn't seen before. And so we wait in the line and wait in the line and I, I think we probably waited in line for three, three and a half, four hours maybe? I don't know, it was a long time, I know total. From the time I arrived on the Colombian side to the time finished, it was five hours. It's usually 15 minutes. The Colombian side is usually very efficient. They have more windows open, things roll fast. I couldn't figure out what it was. And then they, at some point they formed this special line and they're pushing people through. And I noticed they all had Venezuelan passports. And when I finally got up to the window, I could see uh, down into one of the other windowed areas where there was this massive stack of Venezuelan passports. Apparently what happened was two weeks ago, it was in the news, where they guesstimated 35,000 people crashed the border instead of coming through the checkpoint, uh, just out of desperation. And they worked their way through Colombia and they're going out the other side. Well, now they're going to the checkpoint because on the Ecuador side, there's a scourge. You don't have much choice but to go through the checkpoint, at least for a period of some miles. So you have all these people from Venezuela trying to go through, but on their passport, they have no entry visa stamp. And so Colombia is processing them through, but it's Apparently it's more complicated and there's more paperwork to file and there were probably, I don't know, I'll say thousands. There were a lot of them. At the very least hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And so a 15 minute uh, event took five hours. So what does that have to do with this video? Well. This video is basically just to catch you up where I am right now and what happened, where have I been. I want to thank so much my Patreon people. You have hung in there and I mean to go a month with no videos and you're supporting me for videos, I feel obligated to you and I will do my best to make that up to you. But you have hung in there and I appreciate that so much. I will make another little announcement. Um, I need everybody's help with this. Uh, Google has, uh, well it is Google, YouTube is owned by Google. They have come up with this new policy that unless you meet certain benchmarks, you're, you're eliminated. 
Um, they'll let you still put up videos, but the algorithm changed where people really can't find them and it's almost your own personal account. I am just shy. I've, I'm not one to uh, solicit a lot of things, um, but in this case I need to. I need to get some uh, subscribers and I need to get them before the 20th of February or this channel will be gone. So if you can uh, share with friends, if you can uh, basically just beat the bushes for me and get some people that uh, watch to, to subscribe, based on the number of views I have, now they have, um, you have to have 4,000 hours in the past year, that's no problem. I get a tremendous amount of views to the channel. now. On any given video, maybe not so much, might only be three or 400. On another one, it might be 10,000. But I get a lot of views overall. That certainly is not the problem. But probably because I rarely ask for subscribers, I don't really get much subscribers. I'll get three or four a day, tops. So I need subscribers or this channel goes away. So all you people that watch, please hit subscribe so I can uh, keep this going. Shouldn't be a problem, uh, but uh, it would be foolish of me to get to the 20th of next month and I had never asked and the channel gets deleted. So, so much for that. Now what else do we have? I have some videos back in Cuenca that um, even when I was sick, I, I took a few things. I had some things lined up uh, previous to the pneumonia, uh, but I couldn't process because of the laptop issue, and I managed to save a lot of the clips. Um, so I've got a tremendous amount to go through. At last count, I've got 1,900 and some change video clips to turn into videos. That means I have enough clips for about 15 or 16 videos. Um, that's a lot and it's going to take a while uh, so I'm going to be doing this talking head video intermixed with some um, videos like going through Armenia or Manizales those kind of videos that um, you see and I'm going to do some hybrid where I'll show some clips and I'll talk a little bit about it uh, some I'm going to have to look at those clips and probably try to remember what the point was, but uh, from, from this week or this coming week on, you're going to see videos coming out on a regular basis. Right now I'm in Armenia. I'm in a hotel, actually a quite nice hotel. It's costing me $16 a night um, and they have breakfast. Uh, which I skipped this morning, um, but the Wi-Fi is not bad, but not enough to really upload videos. Maybe when I go to sleep tonight, I'll let it uh, try to upload this one overnight. I don't know, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, tomorrow in the morning, I leave for the bus station. I take a bus to Cali. And as I mentioned, from there, I, I go on. So it'll be about two days on the bus. Now, while I'm here at this point, why am I taking a bus and taking two days, and why am I not flying? Well, first of all, I'm not made of money. But beyond that, it takes me two days. But flights, as most of you know, everyone knows probably that lives in Cuenca, and most of you may know that read forums, the flights out of Cuenca are so hit and miss, and it could take you one, two, three days before that flight you paid for actually leaves. I don't want to sit around going back and forth to the airport. Also, there's a tax on flights by Ecuador, and so a flight that would cost you hundred dollars anywhere else in the world will cost you maybe three or four hundred dollars. I did check some flights. There was a flight from Cuenca to Bogota uh, through Quito. 
and then I could take a bus from uh, Bogota or a flight. It was almost $2,000 for that flight, which is just insane. I mean, you can fly from Miami to Bogota for $300. So uh, the, the price, the cost is just uh, ridiculous. So what does it cost by bus? For the nice buses, well, it's, um, it was $20 from Cuenca to the border. And from the border, it was 45,000 pesos to Cali. So about the same. I'll look that up and uh, maybe I'll put it on a scroll here. And then it was $6 from Cali to Armenia. Um, so in other words, very cheap. 60, so though going both ways from Cuenca to Armenia back to Cuenca is going to run me what hundred and twenty dollars maybe I can afford that so that's why I take the bus and if you get the right bus um, you're doing real well and I know the lines to get on and so the chances are in my favor well here in Colombia it will be a nice bus I'll have electric for my cell phone it'll have Wi-Fi it'll have all that the only one that's hit and miss is the Cuenca side and if you get a double decker you're you're all set and if you don't you could be bounced around and be seasick and say oh my god why didn't I fly but that's just the way it is okay I'm gonna wrap this up for now and I'll get on some video editing today before I leave in the morning and I'll upload what I can um, but definitely when I get back Wednesday or Thursday uh, you're gonna start seeing these probably almost on a daily basis until I get this backlog taken care of um, there will be a bunch about Columbia on this trip and there's uh, some older Cuenca ones and in the meantime once I get back I'll probably be shooting a few things as I'm out walking and doing things and um, and so it'll still be lots of uh, Cuenca uh, material. So once again, I thank you for hanging in there. Patreon accounts, oh my God, I thank you so much. I, I, thought, I, I thought I would lose at least some, if not all, and haven't lost any. Uh, so thank you so much for hanging in there. I will find a way to make that up to you. And um, as for my health, look, I got lots of color. I've been walking like crazy. <clears throat> I still have my inhaler, but I think I'm okay to go back. Um, I can tell you that I've been absolutely 100% feeling great in my days here in Armenia. And so my only issue is my lung capacity. How much is left with the pneumonia? Is it, is it completely gone? Have I, have I got it all back? I'll find that out when I get to Quito, when I get to uh, Cuenca. I'll probably and be back to a little coughing, but it, it, I'm not sick. I have no fever. Um, feel great. And it has nothing to do with the sickness I had a few years ago. Uh, absolutely nothing. This is just something, if you catch the flu, if you're not careful, it can turn into something more serious. And that's it. Thank you all. See you soon. You know you could.